Hi, my name is Matt. If I would have known what I know today, seven years ago, I would have made an off a lot. I would have made a different decision on the valves on our IBC totes. I'm standing next to a 275 gallon IBC tote. This holds five drums. The valve is a threaded valve. This is the dust cap. I'm going to remove the dust cap. That's a two inch NPT thread. This is the same type of valve, just different manufacturers. In order to adapt this to a quick disconnect, otherwise known as a cam lock, you need this adapter. That screws on like so, and then you can connect your quick disconnect to there. This is the way we used to do it. Since we get both quick disconnects and threaded valves in, we have decided not to have anything get mixed up, so we've gone to quick disconnects. The quick disconnect valve is the most common valve in the chemical and lubricants industry. The reason I chose to use the two inch MPT thread is those are easily available at Lowe's, Home Depot, in all of farm stores. We'll come back to the event in a minute. Now, all of our totes come with a quick disconnect valve. This is the dust cover. All of them have that foil seal on there indicating that the valve is new. A new valve is very, very important. All of the valve handles have a tie strap that needs to get broken to prevent accidental actuation of the valve itself. If your customer is still using the two inch MPT, there is adapters readily available at all farm stores that will convert that quick disconnect to the two inch MPT. At farm stores, you can get all sorts of additional ends. Some of them are crimped onto hose, but there's, no sh there's, there's a lot of different varieties of adapters. These adapters and the valves themselves are available on our price list. The way this is, is described in literature is a 2D. D refers to the shape. This is a two inch valve. So it needs to be 200. If you see something that says 150, that means that this is an inch and a half. This is the vent. You just pull that off and you open that up. It doesn't need to be fully opened, but when you drain this, it will go a lot faster if you vent the tote. This is there to protect it from being pulled off accidentally. We get a lot of calls to the tech line on how to get fluids out of a 110 gallon disposable tote. This tote is filled with water. It's filled with 110 gallons. That's two barrels worth. What I have in my hand is actually the valve down there. I've cut it out of the bag so that you could see how it works. All the valves come with a tie strap around this to prevent accidental actuation. And they work very, very simply. You take the cover off to prevent accidental spillage. It's just there to protect in shipping. You remove the tie strap. Then you lift up on this and you push 
in. And the oil flows through here, out there. This thread form here is a one, one and a half inch NPT. There's a lot of ways you could get the material out of here. This is not meant for storage. This is considered a transfer tote. You're supposed to remove all of the material and dispose of this properly. All of the items that are in my hand here that I plumbed together poorly, all the purple everywhere, I found at Lowe's. The valve is now closed. You screw that in. You want to make sure your valve is closed. Then you pull down on the tab and push in. And you then open the valve. Now you have flow to your tank. There's also a vent on the top to make, the vent on the top needs to be removed to make it flow easier. This valve has been configured so that it can hook up to my garden hose and we can empty it into the floor drain over there. The valve here is closed. Take the cover off. Screw this in. Get it nice and tight, lift this up, the valve is closed, lift this up, push in. I undid the vent a little bit, now you hook up your transfer hose, and open the valve. and we have flow. Out it comes. One of the easiest things to do is to close the valve inside of here. You just pull up, pull out, make sure that goes down, and flow is stopped. That's our 110. This is our 275 gallon disposable tote. This holds five drums of oil. It is not meant for long-term storage. This is a transfer tote from here to our customer storage tank. We're gonna go through some valves and how this works. These are our two cutter valves. This is the correct one. This is a three inch cutter valve that's made for disposable grease totes, which we are not gonna cover in this video. This is the correct valve for our 275 gallon disposable tote. This is called a cutter valve. This is the cutter portion of the valve. This is the working item. This is what cuts the valve, that, or cuts the bag to allow the oil to come out through the hose and plumbing system to the storage tank. The key to this valve, this cutter, is it's a plunge cutter. You only push it in as hard as you can. You don't twist. If you notice, there's no teeth in the center. The reason there's no teeth is so that you do not fully cut the bag. That little flap of the plastic bag will stay with the bag and not end up in the customer's system. One of the dangers of a disposable tote is forgetting to remove the valve before you throw it out. This piece here is kind of hard to miss, but this piece here is what disappears most often. This piece can be replaced. 
this becomes an issue, give us a call. So let me reassemble this valve real quick. That's the full valve. The cutter goes all the way through, cuts the valve. Remember, don't twist, don't rotate. Plunge. The key is quick, fast. Okay, so let's see how this valve operates from the inside out. So I've cut the valve out of a plastic bag so we can go through it. These these threads on the inside are a 50 millimeter buttress thread. SK refers to the thread shape. I really wouldn't worry too much about that. But these are buttress threads and not national pipe taper. So you got the cap off, you take the cutter portion, again, no teeth, turn it around, stick that in there, get it all the way up against that plastic film. Then you take your valve, this is just the, the end of it, and you screw the valve on. And it's very difficult without the leverage of the whole valve body. But notice how it's already starting to pierce that plastic membrane. You just keep forcing it. And it goes all the way through. Leaves the flap that's necessary. It's not all, it's not, threads are not all the way in. I don't have that seal all the way up against that. We'll keep going as far as we can. And eventually that'll fall out into the bottom of the container. This is too big to get through that hole. You don't have to worry about this clogging up your supply lines or getting into your customer storage tank. This will stay behind in the plastic bag to be thrown away. What you're seeing here is why it's so key when you're using this that it's strictly a plunge. If you twist, you'll cut this whole bag and this little piece of plastic will get caught in your supply lines to your storage tank. When you take off the dust cap, one of the things you're going to notice is this with a bunch of teeth pointing out. If you've lost this portion of the cutter valve, you have one on every disposable tote. So this is not a, a huge showstopper. What you do is you take this half piece of plastic, notice the teeth don't go all the way around it, so it leaves a flap of plastic bag attached so that it doesn't end up in your system. You turn that around, get it as close as you can to the plastic bag, make sure your valve is closed, and then just screw that in and that piece of blue plastic will stay in place and function as your cutter valve. Now we're going to demonstrate how the cutter valve works. Valve is open, plunger can get all the way through. We're going to remove that piece of blue pet, that blue ring screw this as tight as possible now remember the valve is open so you can get the plunger all the way through. 
And remember, it's not a twist motion, it's not a sawing motion, it's a plunge motion. The fluid will come out of the bag and stop here because the valve's open. So you want to plunge, retract, close valve, then hook up your supply. So let's plunge. Retract, close. Once again, I created a fitting, connected it to a garden hose to drain this water out of here as if it were going to our customer's storage tank. Retract the valve fully. Remove the cutter portion. You will have a little spillage. You take your, take your supply line, screw it to the cutter valve, That thread is a two inch NPT. Hook up your transfer line. Open the valve. Always helps the vent for faster flow. And there's the water coming from this 275 gallon tote. One of the key things is that rubber, that gasket there, this gasket here is this gasket. And you need to get good compression on there because this is actually in the tote. This is part of the valve. So that tote valve goes all the way up here and you want to see good compression on that seal so you don't have any leaks. Likewise, one of the other leak paths is this seal, which seals up against the body of the valve. So always double check that this is nice and compressed up against the valve body. This is a great system. It's environmentally friendly, uses sustainable material, this whole system is 100% recyclable, but as always, check your local ordinances.